Hey guys, my name is Wesley Shibata of DabTac and I'm here today to talk about the Ronin ballistic helmets right here and what makes it different from all the other ballistic helmets out there. First, I'd like to talk about why I started making the, these helmets. Well, back in 2004 when I started playing Airsoft, there weren't a lot of protection for your eyes. There was this cheap $10 Sensei mask which is made of steel mesh and you had the goggles that fogged up a lot and this one gave you double vision and I thought to myself maybe there are better products out there for military or police or what have you and I found out that even for them they don't really have much choices aside from the one piece ballistic helmet which covers 30% of your head and sometimes even the ears is not protected and if it does cover the face it's that huge ballistic glass that weighs about 2.2 kilograms and the other one is a huge mandible with a 30% uh, cover for the eyes that visor and it doesn't really protect you from from um, other bullets right so along the way when I started researching about it I was just so obsessed about it maybe I could integrate you know a fan system because there was ESS that had fans on top of it, but that fan only blows air out. It didn't blow air in, so it's still fogged up. So I thought to myself, maybe we could you know, blow air into the lens. And there were other patents that I checked. It also didn't work. So in 2008, I started researching and designing. And in 2011, I came up with this one right here. Now this is the lens frame of the helmet. What it does is that it blows air onto the lens and defogs it instantly. It also has an air duct for exit, uh, for the humi humidity to exit. And you have here a micro jet fan built in inside. Another beauty about this lens frame right here is that you can easily replace the lenses, right? Simply install it in, slide it in, and change different colors. So that's the main feature of this helmet. Now, it's pretty easy to install as well. So this one is the frame of the mask, and we'll talk about that shortly. So you have this, simply put this in the eye socket, and then, you know, just push it right there, and easy to remove as well. Just like that okay so that is the first ever feature that I made for defogging so you can see clearly now moving on this one is the mask itself this is the chassis of the helmet this is made of ballistic Kevlar and it's very light as you can see there are vents right here and the vents acts as um, breathing area at the same time now the mask is a plate carrier what it does is that we can install any type of plate onto it or any type of feature that you'd like added onto the helmet so that's one of the beauty of this helmet now this is also ballistic it can stop a 12 gauge birdshot now that acts as a suspension now we have different types of plates. So let's talk about, let's talk about the plates. This is a full piece mandible. Now the full piece mandible has more protection, but the problem is you don't have a good cheek weld, meaning you cannot see through your iron sights or your scope easily. And you're gonna have to use a laser for that. Now that's a big problem with most of ballistic helmets out there. For example, the GIGN helmets that has the huge piece of glass. That one weighs about 2.2 kilograms and then you have the helmet which weighs about 1 kilogram or more, sometimes even less. The, less I heard was, uh, the least I heard was about 900 grams, but that's just the helmet and doesn't cover your face, right? Now, the problem with that helmet is that it only protects you. It doesn't really have much other f functionality. For example, 
you cannot add a night vision on it or most of all cheek well now you enter a room right you don't have a cheek well you're aiming like this and sometimes you can't even use your laser sight your lasers so I'm not sure what kind of accuracy you have but definitely it's not 100% accuracy and you probably might shoot some someone else that you're not intending to shoot what we did with the Ronin helmet is that we detached the cheek plate now it's magnetized you can also bolt it in to lock it in place this one gives you a better cheek weld now it's not normal but it's way better than those ballistic other ballistic helmets out there okay we'll move on to that later I'll show you how to use that one so now let's talk about the ballistics of the helmet like I said it's a plate carrier we can change the levels of the plates from non-ballistic non-ballistic application would be for training so you don't get worn out easily because of the weight of the helmet now the weight of the helmet is 2.2 kilograms for the most basic one and it could go up to 2.7 to 2.9 now again it may sound like a little bit heavy but compared to other ballistic helmets 2.8 with absolute um, how to say balance when you're wearing it and functionality and so on and so forth is just way better in my opinion now the ballistic plates we have level 2a we can add level 2 and sooner level 3a hopefully very soon level 3 so we can basically put any type of plate on it for example right here we have a ventilation system so this ventilation system blows air in to the helmet and also blows air out. One, one fan blows air in, one fan blows air out, or you can have both fans facing down and blowing air in or both facing out. So a lot of people are saying, well, it's a full helmet. It gets really hot at the same time. Again, this one has a micro jet fan blowing air onto the lens and defogging it. You can add this as an option, blowing air in and blowing air out, making you much cooler inside. And it's operated by nine volt battery. The nine volt battery lasts about three hours. Now, we're using nine volt battery because it's pretty easy to find these types of battery almost anywhere. The defogging system is um, operated by two AAA battery, again, you can find that almost anywhere. Now, moving on to the ballistic plate. The ballistic plates has rubber lining inside. Rubber foam, 1.5 millimeter rubber foam, right between the plate and the frame right here. The reason why is the same thing as tanks now. now Talking about tanks, let's talk about the World War I tank. World War I tank was made of huge piece of slab of steel, right? You compare that to tanks now, which has a much lighter frame, and the ballistic protection is outside on separate plates with rubber right in between. The reason why that is is because it absorbs the kinetic energy and disperses the kinetic energy onto one area instead of having a huge impact all to the tank itself when you compare it to the world war ii tanks because it's such a huge slab of steel the projectile would easily penetrate that or if it didn't there's just a huge vibration all over you know the tank itself the helmet is exactly the same the same design okay so right there now this time we're going to talk about the helmet itself it's two-piece helmet now the reason why it's two-piece helmet is because it's easier access to your face 
and also it's um, how do you say it absorbs the kinetic energy and at the same time it helps you remove it faster and less back face deformation what I meant about back face deformation let's talk again about these current ballistic helmets out there it's one piece what's funny about that one piece is that um, if it gets hit the back face deformation is pretty much very deep like about 15 millimeters or even more ours the back face deformation this one on 357 magnum is less than 9 millimeter now if a back face deformation happens it's pretty difficult to just pull it out from the person who got injured because there would be more injury or probably there's a lot of de deformation and very difficult to just pull it out like that right this one is easy so okay let me show you how to wear this one one of the features I like about this helmet is this forehead strap now the forehead strap acts like your seat belt now when a projectile hits the front of the face the mask will not hit you but this one will pull you back instead so that's a really good feature about this helmet okay now to wear this one is pretty easy you have here the hook you have two pins and it's also supported by five magnets what you need to do is simply hold the hook right here locate the hole on top of the helmet place the hook easily and then the pins would lock right there now that's as easy as that I remove it just like that only takes a bit of practice put it back in okay so now I'm wearing it the fan is on there's no fogging I can see really clear now a lot of people are saying it doesn't have peripheral vision well it actually does because the mask is pretty close to your face compared to other ballistic helmets now peripheral vision of this one is about 160 degrees horizontal right and about 140 degrees lateral now 140 degrees lateral seems a bit small but because of the helmet is contoured to the size of your head it's pretty easy it's pretty maneuverable and I can look down easily just like that I can see my feet well, I can't really see my chest, so it's pretty difficult to locate my magazine and other stuff, but of course you're going to need to practice for that, right? Now, so let's say I breach the door. I have four guys with me. One on my right, one on my left, one at the back. They're responsible for the left, responsible for the right. I breach. Now, I don't need to use my laser and I need to use my iron sight or probably my scope. Just like that, I can see clearly. And I have much better accuracy. I have better protection, much better accuracy. Another thing is that this is the only full ballistic helmet that can use a night vision. How do you operate this? Ah, oh, there you go. Just like that. Now, for the night vision, people are saying, how about the weight distribution? Well, the helmet also acts as a skull crusher. So, the night vision is here. The helmet is pushed onto your face or onto your chin. Or, if it's snug fit, you have the strap carefully placed and you have the chin strap. You don't have to worry about that, see? It does not wobble. Simple as that. Okay. Now, to remove it, simply push this in and pull this out. Okay. So, next is 
let's talk more about this helmet right here. We have the ballistic paddings. This is made by FlexTech in USA. They also distribute to other ballistic helmets and also for motorbikes. This is about seven millimeter thick. Now, it's not that thick because of the suspension of the helmet that it gives you. Again, this is Kevlar. You have the 1.5 millimeter foam as an uh, acts as a suspension and you have the mask that acts as a suspension as well. Now, sizing. We have four different sizes currently. We have large long, we have large short, we have regular long and regular short. Now, the large helmet is for men who has a head circumference of 58 and more. And as for the regular, it's for men who has a head circumference of 58 or less, or 70, uh, 57 or less. Now, if it's a lot smaller for you, it's very simple. You just add foams underneath the flex deck foam, which is provided um, in the box. So you just add foams here to make it a little bit thicker to have a very good snug fit. Okay, so let's talk about communications. Now the communication right here, people are saying, oh, I cannot use my huge Peltors earmuffs for that one. Well, those have been around for more than, what, 50 years now, and we have better technology now. So this is a digital earplug. This is made by Envisio, and what it does is that it protects you from loud bangs, and at the same time, it's like a super hearing aid. You can hear what's happening around you, or mumbling sound or something like that, and you can also switch it to just absolutely silent and still connect it to your radio. It's a PTT. Now, this is not the only company that makes these kinds of products. There's um, Silex. There's also Esterline. Okay, that's for the communication. Next one is heads-up display. This is what I love about the current technology now. Heads-up display, you can connect it to a 360-degree camera and see around you easily. You can connect it to a gun camera um, you can also connect it to a drone and feeds you live information of what's happening around you and you know probably tell you where the bogies are. So that's one. There are many different types of companies that uh, makes heads up display now. Now like again I said the beauty of the helmet is we can actually install anything that you can think of on to the helmet. Different types of plates, different types of attachments and so on and so forth. Lastly, is that, what else am I missing? I think that's basically, oh, you have the ventilation system. I think I already said that. Um, so basically, that's it. Now, if I missed anything, I'm just going to add it onto the video. Well, thank you guys very much for watching. My name is Wesley Shabbat of DevTech. Again, have a good day. Bye. <sighs>